the, one of the greatest joy of knowing Peter, Robert, Levi, and a few other people, when I go up to Levi's house, is that I stop talking. All I have to do is eat and listen to them while I'm napping. And I felt that maybe in my lifetime I would try to translate Taz into Vietnamese, but since the whole situation in China needed more badly, I have asked another friend in China to do it because of Ai Weiwei. So come up, Peter. has understood perfectly my non-juring Anglican revival project and provided constructive critiques and advice. Basically, let me explain, I was baptized and confirmed Episcopalian. I never leave anything behind, I just move on. As Gérard de Nerval said, what, me, no religion? Why, I have at least 17. <laughs> so on one level, I'll always be Anglican, like it or not. Some years ago, I learned about the non-juring Anglicans, those who remained loyal Jacobites, that is, Stuart legitimists, and refused to swear new oath to the, Hanover, to the Hanovers as heads of the church in 1688. The poet Henry Vaughan must have been, might have been a non-juror, and the great Anglican mystic William Law was certainly a non-juring priest, and the first English translator of Jakob Burma. While reading his book, A Serious Call, I envisioned him advising me to take up the non-juring cause and try to revive it. There appears to be no other living members of this church. <laughs> I've looked. <laughs> Two years ago, I began a series of vanishing artworks in which the art itself must disappear as soon as possible. For example, by melting, burning, being buried, being thrown in water, etc. Valuable, item and valuable items are best for sacrifice. Gold rings thrown in Catskill Stream to commemorate Algonquian spirits, etc. I find that the spirits are not fooled by little cardboard cutouts, <laughs> the way William Yates apparently thought they would be. They want real money. Money is very hermetic. Documentation is allowed, and each work usually comes with various manuscripts, texts, historical background, explanations, poems, and photographs. I make a geomantic map for each major work. Last year, <clears throat> my last autumn project, called Seven Churches and Three Tracts, was devoted to the magical revival of non-juring Anglicanism by hiding or throwing away diamonds and other jewels, each one dedicated to the spirit of a fixed star, according to the system of Cornelius Agrippa, in various church graveyards, etc. This year we will celebrate an actual non-juring Anglican even song in a church very near Robert Kelly's home. Ritual is a vanishing art form. It leaves no trace. Recently Robert asked me if I could sincerely subscribe to the famous 39 articles of the, of the church, of the Episcopal Church. I said yes, but in an esoteric sense, which might turn the outer text upside down. He suggested I work on this in greater depth. So I have, to use his phrase, written in to the 39 articles and have thereby created some sort of poem-like object. <laughs> I will now lend Robert my book of common prayer so that he can remind himself of the original text as I read my antinomian libertine non-juring Anglican text so that the two texts will mix and meld in his mind into a mysterious hermetic third, never entirely written, ephemeral, and gone forever. So Robert, here's the 39 articles. <laughs> Thank you, brother. Refer to that. <coughs> Fine, if I go on too long, where's long? If I go on too long, stop me. So of course I renamed it 39 Steps <laughs> for Robert Kelly. Um, um, 
dis uh, disagreed upon in creative spirit by archbishops and bishops of the esoteric provinces of the whole clergy, one, <laughs> in the convocation Holden at Panyang in the year 2011 for the fostering of diversities of opinion and for the disestablishing and disconsent touching true religion id est non-juring Anglicanism, reprinted in the spirit of the acephalous Charles King and Martyr with his royal head's declaration prefixed esoterically thereunto, quote, from the king over the water to his loving subjects. If any difference arise, cherish it under our broad seal and cipher so to do, contrary to all laws and customs of the land. Desire shall have license under our broad seal. We take comfort in this that even in those curious points, men of all sorts, that none of them intend any desertion. All further curious search be never laid aside and shut up and submit to it in the plan full esoteric meaning and put his own sense to it, both <clears throat> illiteral and ungrammatical sense. Any public reader shall preach or print anything either way with our royal assent. <clears throat> Articles of religion, or the 39 steps. One, one substance, human nature in the womb, Godhead and humanhood, joined in ecstasy, might have suffered, might not, crucified or not, buried or not, will pardon all actual sins, why not? <laughs> Three, he went down into the hell of proletarian commodity relations and harrowed it. <laughs> Four, flesh and bones might have ascended into heaven, or mightn't have. We no longer care. Five, ghost. Six, <laughs> holy nature containeth all things necessary to salvation, so that whatsoever is not read therein, nor may be proved thereby, is not to be required of any human, that it should be believed as an article of faith, or be thought requisite or necessary to salvation. Seven, Law do not bind Christians, nor civil precepts be received in any common wealth, as if the ranters had taken over the Church of England. Mm -hmm. um, eight, the three creeds be understood esoterically and even Gnostically. Nine, as we see it, we agree more with Pelagius. The wisdom of the flesh, desire, is not subject to law. 10, we have the power to do good works, pleasant and acceptable to God. 11, we are justified by esoteric faith only. 12, good works, fruits of faith, follow after justification and can put away our sins. <clears throat> um, known as a tree, discerned by its fruit. 13, unlucky. 14, supererogation, <laughs> works and rituals over and above God's commandments are the aroma on the flower of faith. 15, we came to be lambs without spot. Sin, as St. John saith, we have no sin. Already perfect, antinomians. 16, even I'm against, even sin against the Holy Ghost is pardonable. 17, be justified freely. Be made children of God by adoption for the repaganization of monotheism in the image of Jesus Christ, sweet, unspeakable, working of the spirit, fervently kindled love. 18, everyone shall be saved by the law or sect which he or she professeth. And the light of nature, the only name of Jesus Christ is all holy names. 19, church spiritual, acephalous, unless under the pretender or king over the water, headless as John the Baptist. 20, the church hath power to decree rites and ceremonies as an art form and as a means of contemplation of the mysteries. 21, general councils may not be gathered together without the com commandment and will of princes. No princes, no councils. <laughs> no councils, no dogma. 22, worshiping of images as of, re as of relics and also invocation of saints of these consists the hermetic or esoteric path of non-juring Anglicanism. 23, anyone can take on the office of public preaching. Apostolic succession, however, is potent magic. 24, tongue, 
<laughs> 25, either everything is sacramental or else nothing. 26, the ministration of sacraments bestows temporary perfection. <clears throat> 27, John the Baptist was co-messiah with Jesus, a fact long obscured by the Pauline church. Uh -huh. 28, transubstantiation, change of substance of bread and wine, hath given occasion to many superstitions, which is why we sort of like it. <laughs> 29, even the wicked who carnally and visibly press the sacrament with their teeth, as St. Augustine saith, surely gain thereby some blessing. <laughs> 30, wine for everyone. At last, an article we wholeheartedly approve, <laughs> including the esoteric wine of the Sufis. 31, if the offering of Christ once made is that perfect redemption, propitiation and satisfaction for all sins, then we are all antinomian perfectionists. <clears throat> the worship, and we worship Jesus the failure. 32, not only can priests and lay people marry, they can also have holy sex in any way they like. Otherwise, God would be ungenerous, which is logically impossible. <laughs> 33, we are all heathens and publicans. 34, traditions and ceremonies are magical, all traditions and ceremonies, especially those of the African religions, Hermeticism, Hinduism, Taoism, Sufism, etc. 35, same for homilies, the emerald mountain of all the world's holy words. 36, consecrations of bishops and ministers according to the apostolic succession, the same, pure magic. 37, the king's majesty uh, may have had the power to rule church and society, but in the absence of the king, there is no such power. Thus, we embrace spiritual anarchism. 38, goods in common, as certain Anabaptists claim, might have been a good idea. <laughs> and finally, 39, in theory, we refuse our oath to worldly authority. We are non-jurors as far as possible, as much as we can get away with. Thank you.